I just want to invest in people that really want to be the best that they can be. Hello everyone, it's Todd Screamo. Welcome to another Be Your Best episode. This episode, I'm super excited about it. We're talking about fixed versus growth mindset. Which are you? And I have uh, a friend of mine, Vasily, help me with the last name, Korchevoy. Am I correct. right? Yes. I correct. got it. So Vasily, uh, when I thought of doing this podcast, I thought, I know the perfect person. And uh, you're going to get to know uh, a little bit about Vasily. But he really illustrates this point, uh, the whole point to this podcast uh, with the story because he was uh, raised in the Ukraine, which was the Soviet Union back then, moved here when he was 12, and then has really de developed himself in business at a very high level. He's very humble. He's very soft-spoken about it. So I may have to brag on him a little bit from time to time. But I want you to hear a story because he is really living proof that as, as adults, we can change this mindset. So uh, first of all, <clears throat> this, this, uh, this has been a, a great topic for me. I, I don't know when, uh, there's a, a, a lady named Carol Dweck that wrote a book called Mindset and all the credit goes to her. I'm gonna show you a visual aid from the book. And the basic premise is, is that uh, based on certain subjects, some people have a fixed mindset and some people have a growth mindset. And it has a lot to, to do with determining how well they do in life. So um, just to, to give some, some further opening comments before I show this visual on screen. By the way, you can always, if you're driving or uh, watching this on audio, or listening to this on audio, you can always get these visuals on, at beyourbestseries.com. We post all these uh, things so that you can look at them. Um, so I'll show that in a minute. Um, I believe that that people are happiest when they're growing and and when they're making progress. You know, I'll give you an example, um, silly example. I played a great game of golf the other day uh, with my brother and my nephew and my best friend. And I was I was I had taken a golf lesson and I made great progress because I was driving the ball straighter and longer than I ever have. That's an example. I was happy the whole round, even though I lost some money to my brother, uh, it, it, I, I was happy the whole round. Like this is working, it's working, it's working. So that's a small example. Vasily is going to give some examples. I'm going to give some examples, but let me actually explain uh, the visual or show the visual because I think it, she did an excellent job on this. Um, Here's the basic idea is a fixed mindset believes that intelligence and I, I, I'm not sure if I love that word intelligence, um, but intelligence is static. In other words, you are what you're born with. So that idea that we are who we are uh, and it's never, never shall change leads to a, a desire to look at smart, uh, to, to look smart or appear smart. In other words, protect our ego and a tendency to avoid challenges, to give up easily when obstacles come up, to see effort as fruitless, to ignore useful feedback or criticism, and also feels threatened at the success of others. And as a result, they may plateau early and achieve less than their full potential. And all this confirms a deterministic view of the world. Um, I'll use a metaphor on this uh, and, and maybe touch on this later. Um, weight, people's weight tend to be fall into these categories very easily. Um, someone can, I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, my whole, my whole family is a little overweight. My, my family's big boned, um, you know, and they say things like that. Whenever you hear someone say something like that, or they, uh, a, 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 a sure way to find out if someone is fixed-minded is if it if it's someone else's fault or there's outside influence that they don't control and they couldn't possibly control. Whenever you hear comments like that, that person is fixed-minded on that subject. So now go over to the growth mindset. These individuals believe that intelligence can be developed. Common sense can be developed. Skill sets can be developed. And this leads to... Uh, a tendency to embrace challenges, to persist even though there's setbacks, 
to see effort as a pathway to mastery, to learn from criticism and find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. And as a result, they reach an even higher level of achievement. And all this gives them a greater sense of free will. That's on the growth side of the equation. So that is kind of big picture. And that is what uh, Vasily and I are just discussing today. This is going to be more discussionary. Um, I, I, I like, I like listening to things that either give me tactics or give me ideas because the ideas can lead to, to um, you know, a new way of thinking about things. So Vasily, let me, let me have you, I, I want people to hear your story a little bit because I don't even know some of it. I want to just a uh, brief overview of where you were raised, how you came to America and how you got I into business. Sure, sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, I was born in 86 in uh, Chernivtsi, Ukraine, which uh, was part of the Soviet Union back then. Uh, it was, uh, you know, we got independence in 1991. So this year it's 30 years of independence for Ukraine. Um, so I was, you know, I went to school in the post post Soviet time uh, in the nineties. It was the hardest time for the country. And a lot of people were looking to emigrate and find a better life. So my parents did the same. Uh, we had relatives here in the Sacramento area and uh, were able to emigrate here in 98. So I was 12, went to school, uh, finished school in 2003, uh, finished school a little bit early, went to college and then got uh, hired at the credit union uh, in 2004. Okay. So I was, wasn't even 18 uh, by that time, just almost turned 18 and got hired. So and I stayed there at the credit union for 13 and a half years, uh, went up from you know being a clerk to, to doing mortgages and doing small commercial loans. Uh, so it was, it was a great time learning and being in the community, getting to know people, building myself and, uh, and learning new things as, as I grow, grew. And uh, that's when I, you know, I really looked at my, you know, future. And uh, we had, uh, at that time, we had four children, my wife, and uh, I needed, you know, to either get another job to pay for the bills or, or get a second job or move to another career or find a, you know, better income. So I was I, I was hesitant to move to like a, a commission-based system because it's, you, you don't know what's going on and going, and I was at the credit union and I saw what people went through in the 2008, 2009, 2010. And uh, I was actually doing collections back then. Right. <laughs> so I saw what, uh, what people went through with the housing and with loans and with everything. So it was, uh, it was hard for me to, do, to, to make that leap but at, at the end of the day, I, I needed to, you know, provide for my family. So what I, what I did is after a sale of a, a rental property, I, I kept some money, kept some reserves. So I was uh, thinking to myself, like, okay, if, if this is not going to work, I at least have a one year of reserves and then I can find a nine to five job again. And, uh, and that never happened. I never tapped into those reserves because uh, the first year I was able to double my, my income. So going to 100% commission uh, as a loan officer. So that was, that was an eye opener right, right there. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool story. So I just want to paraphrase uh, because I honestly, Vasily, most of us can't, we all have trials and tribulations, but not many of us came from uh, a, a, um, a village in the Ukraine, come to America at 12, have to learn the language, you know, have put ourselves through high school and college and all that stuff. And then, then you had a decent job at a credit union. Then you made a big leap uh, a couple of years ago, coming to, to Summit. And, and we've been working together. And I've just been so impressed by your ability to, you're very humble, you're very smart, you're coachable, um, you, you are a very calculated risk taker. Um, and I wanted people to hear that part. Like, it's not like you just jumped off a bridge. You said, Hey, I had, uh, one year of reserves and, 
you know, I had planned this out and, uh, and, and all of that. So that is, uh, I, I can't imagine that growing up in, in the Ukraine, that being this entrepreneurial businessman was, was a common thought process. Am I right? Uh, so in, in Ukraine in the 90s, uh, it was just a just a hard time uh, because the Soviet Union was everything was belonging to the government. So in 1991, all the factories stopped. Everything stopped because there's no owners. There's no uh, there's no people that. Uh, so basically, everybody started dividing the assets of the country and there was mafia and there was this was just a bad time. So a lot of people went, you know, to Poland, to other countries to earn a living. So a lot of people actually started the entrepreneurial, they had to, they had to survive. So they had to do a small business, sell something at the markets. My parents were lucky. We were, we were middle class basically in Ukraine, but I did, my, my, my grandparents come from a village and we did have people that in the village and I was growing up, I went to my grandma to, for the summer break. And uh, there were like two houses down. There were kids that didn't have shoes on their feet. They were, they were just playing barefoot in the street. We we didn't because we came from the city. But but I saw them and I and I uh, it was it's just very, uh, you know. When, when I look back, it's what we have here in the United States. We should be very thankful for the prosperity we have, and uh, s- you know, stop thinking that okay times are bad it's hard because it, it's not it's not hard thank you, thank you. uh you know d- not not to get on on a soapbox but uh i do struggle sometimes when when people uh especially this last year and a half people have this oh america sucks and we don't know how to do anything and everything's going to hell in a handbasket and i just think to myself okay why don't you go to a third world country and spend a few months there and then come back and tell me that like i just I mean, let, let me give an example. I've got a friend of mine who is my gardener and I got to know him a little bit. And here's a gentleman uh, from Mexico and he has a full-time job that's, that's a pretty good job. And then he has a whole crew of people that work with him on the weekends and they, they cut grass and you know manicure the houses. And so I was talking to him one day and I'm just like, you know, how did this get started? And, and how do you have a full-time job and you do this? And how many clients do you have? So I do all the math and he's making several thousand dollars a month on the weekends with a crew of five guys uh, that work all, all week around. And then he's like the supervisor and he goes to each location over the weekends and, hey, are we doing a good job? He's always, hey, Todd, do you like this plant? Uh, you know, he, he takes a lot of initiative. Um, and I, I just think about it and I'm like, wow, you know, th- this guy's re- he just bought his first house. Um, he, he's, he just had his third child. I mean, I just admire his growth mindedness and his ambition. And when he, when he talks to me, I just think that I'm like, gosh, here's a guy who has a full-time job and has another side job that he also makes several thousand dollars a, a month in and is doing really well for himself. And then I look at you and you, you, I want, I'd love for you to share this story. Uh, I'm not sure how much of it you want to share, but Vasily and I were talking last January and he, he, uh, we were just talking about random stuff. And he says, well, Todd, we were, I was on a trip with my wife and, and uh, I, I told her how much money we made last year and she didn't believe me. And uh, would you share that story a little bit? Because I think it's, it kind of illustrates this entire point. Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, we're traveling to visit relatives in another state, and uh, I, I haven't told her that the W two came in. So I'm like, uh, I told her on the ear, like, do, do you know how much we made last year? And she's like, how much? And I told her the amount, and she's like, can you repeat one more time? Because I, <laughs> what, what do you mean? And I'm like, I told her again, and she's like, no, repeat one more time, please. Are you serious? <laughs> So she she couldn't believe me, uh, but uh, you know, thank God that we 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 made this money, and I'm grateful for it. So it, it was really you know uh, an eye opener for her that she she because she's she's taking care of the kids. We have four kids, so she 
feels like she's not bringing in enough for the family. You know, she's not working at a job. But I tell her like, you're you're working more than I am. So you're working harder than I am. Just so you know, I know that. So so your uh, your dedication, everything is is even more than I I bring in. So. Yeah. No. Well, one of the things one of the things that I that I get from you that I want people to hear is uh, you are very grateful and humble, and those are two traits that I see that growth-minded people who continue to have growth, they maintain those two things. Um, that sense of humility. You know, sometimes um, basically people will come up to me and, and I get this a lot and they'll say, gosh, I got to know you, you're so humble. And I'm like, well, I'm just a person, you know, and I'm very grateful for, for everything that I've done in my life and the, the people in my life. And I wake up every morning and kind of pinch myself. You know, I was having a bad day on Monday. I was kind of exhausted. I I um, had my niece at my house this weekend and we, uh, she asked me to marry her and we had it in my backyard. So I would came home from a business trip on Friday, walk into my house, there's 50 people setting up and you know, I got company in my house all weekend and we had a ball and the wedding was unbelievable. And um, so Monday I was, I was just kind of tired. And then I, I caught myself about half mid midway and I'm like, hey, dummy, so you're a little tired. Get over it. Like Jesus, you had a, you had one of the best weekends of your life. Like, to snap out, and I just kind of self coached myself out of it. Um, but you have that at a higher level, and I really admire that about you. I admire about it when I see it in people because a lot of people that have learned to be growth minded, what gets them out of the growth mindedness to me is lack of gratitude and lack of humility. And I spent 20 years coaching entrepreneurs and, and very successful people. And I would be coaching them. And when I sensed that they were losing the, those two things, I would always try and bring them back to center because whenever they lost it, they went off a cliff. And so I, that's kind of a, a, you know, more of a, just something I recognized over the years. So I really like that about you. Um, you know, let me, let me share a quick story. It's kind of a silly story, but it, but it, it, it's it's illustrative of what we're talking about, because I how this how I've seen this this idea of fixed and growth mindset how I've seen it play out in people is by subject, and so think of think of think of it like marriage is a subject, being a parent is a subject, um, your job is a subject, um, wealth building and saving money is a subject. So you've got you know all of I could go on and on, but it's it's subject by subject so for me um i this is about six seven years ago uh i was so i'm six three i was i, I remember getting on the scale and i was 233 pounds or something like that at my heaviest and i thought wow what, what, you know, what's that about? Like that, that's because you don't really realize you gain a couple pounds, gain a couple pounds. So I said, Hey, I'm going to change this. You know, I, I, I study this growth minded stuff. I, I feel that way in almost every area of my life, but I didn't feel that way necessarily with weight. And so I said, okay, this is basic, you know, calories in calories out. Uh, I've always exercised. So that wasn't the issue. So long story short, over the course of, I don't know, nine months or so, I got down to about 186, 187 pounds, and I've stayed there now for several years. Um, I still don't have that elusive six pack, right? I don't know if I ever will. I think I can get one if I'm willing to, to go through that work. But even th that area that I thought that I was, th or that I knew I was fixed minded, I flipped it. Um, you did it with your career and your income and savings and stuff like that. So where I'm, where I'm at today, and again, this is, this is, I'm 51, so it's, it's, it's a lot of years of growing businesses and coaching people, is I truly believe that anyone can achieve anything, but not unless they think this way. Um, I was listening to Ed Milet's a, a podcast I listened to. I, I think I've listened to everyone. I had a guy in there last week. Um, I just listened to it this morning working out, and this guy ran did a hundred triathlons in a hundred days. The previous world record was 50 triathlons in a row. This guy did 100. 
running through stress fractures. He tells this story where um, he, um, he, he would be so physically exhausted and tired that he would pass out. And the person with him, he had a buddy with him at all times, would give him 10 seconds and then, okay, let's go again. But he would literally just pass out from pain and fatigue. And so that, that goes back to embracing challenges, persisting through setbacks, you know, this whole idea. And, and, and some people, when you go over this, like, Todd, you're just saying work harder. Todd, you're just saying be positive. It's actually deeper than that. It's, it's, a, it's a belief system, but it's also how you feel, which turns into how you behave, how you act. And that's kind of the cascade that it goes down, in my opinion. And it's different subject to subject. So the reason I wanted to say that is some people may be on here and they're like, you know, I get that growth mindset at work. Man, I'm, I become the VP of this and the manager of this. My income's gone way up. But, but when it comes to saving money, they're fixed. Todd, my dad went bankrupt. My, none of my family has any money. And I'm just not going to have any money. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, no, your growth mindset in your career and in your income, but it doesn't translate to savings. And so how do we, let's fix that mindset because what you said is not true. You make plenty of money to save a bunch of money. That's not the issue. You just don't think you can. And so we've got to build those skill sets, but it starts with a, a process of, of truly believing that you could do whatever you want. And I, I that sounds again, kind of airy fairy, but when I see someone like yourself, that came from a totally different country with a totally different culture, didn't know the language and doing what you've done, I'm sure it's not been easy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. My, I'm just, uh, I remember when I came here, it's been three weeks since we arrived and then I had to go to school. It was uh, seventh grade. And uh, that was a stressful time because uh, kids are different. They speak differently. I knew a little bit of English, uh, but I, I didn't understand for a couple of weeks because because the way you speak is different as like British English. Uh, so it's it was it wasn't uh, and like the culture is different. The teachers are different. Like it's a lot of stress for kids to go through that, and uh, it's it was it was a hard time, but we got through it, and I think that's what makes. Uh, like immigrants be successful, I think is this stress that they have to go through, like, especially people like from Mexico, from South America, they're, it's, it's hard for them because they're, they're coming from these countries with a lot of corruption, same as Ukraine, by the way. Uh, and then they have to obey the rules here because there's laws, there's, you know, it's a different country, the rule of law. And then they have to learn the language and uh, start, you know, the work ethic is very high in the United States, much higher than in, in Ukraine. So people work longer here, work harder, but it pays off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and this, and this, I think when people move here, these are the people that want to change. Uh, so the people that want, don't want change, they, they stay where they are. Yeah, and, and you know, when we go through all these things, I, I always like to clarify this. Um, I, one of the reasons I do this silly podcast is I really want people to be their personal best. And, and it's different for different people. Um, it's, it, it, there's nothing wrong with anything, you know, as long as it's legal and the right things, nothing wrong with what anybody does. But it's the encouraging idea that people can, you can do things that you never thought possible. But if no one's ever told you that, you never thought that way, how could you do it? So my, one of the questions I have for you is, how did you even get on that track? Or, or was it enough just to, to come to a totally different country where you and your family felt it could be more prosperous? I mean, what, what started that mindset? Because it, it had to start someplace. Yeah, yeah. So when you're, you, you, I don't think you'll be able to understand this, but when you're in a, you know, second or third world country and you're thinking of moving to a United States or Western Europe or something to a first world country, you, you have this thinking in your head, like, okay, this is a country where you can do anything, or at least you're told that. Uh, so uh, when we, we moved here, it's United States, I think is the 
is the country of opportunity. Uh, because I've seen people that uh, I work with clients that are from poor areas of Ukraine, Moldova, Russia, um, other parts of the world that they, they came here and they have no limits. So nobody's stopping them from having a company with 200 trucks or 400 trucks or, or having a construction company and building houses in Napa Valley in Lake Tahoe. I mean, this just, just, you know, and that's, that's kind of, that's kind of enough to see that. And like, if they can do it, you can do it, you know? Uh, so this, this is a great, another great example of why this country is a great, is a great country because nobody's stopping you. Mm -hmm. If you did this in a third world country, uh, the either politicians or mafia or something that hold those niches, they want a piece of the pie or you won't be able to do it here. It's different. You just, you put in money. If you do it right, if you work hard, if your, you know, work ethic is high, if people trust you, you, you'll achieve great things. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really insightful. Um, it's, it, it does have that kind of land of opportunity feeling. There are people, you know, in general, I think what 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 I what I hear you saying is, hey, there's no reason to to think or feel that way, other than, hey, it's a, it, you can be as prosperous as you want, uh, in in a number of different ways. You know, I got a friend of mine who is um, who is is a yoga instructor, and um, you know, she lives a different lifestyle. Uh, and what I mean by that is, she has her own business, she does consulting. And she coaches people who want to be instructors. And she's developed, between everything that she does, she's developed this really cool lifestyle. And she is not rich, but she's doing what she loves. She's super into it. And she's really good at it. And she totally supports herself and makes good money and has these niches that she's created. And that's kind of what you're saying. So I don't mean to sound uh, like, Oh, you know, hey, everyone's got to use this mindset to make a million bucks. I, I think sometimes people hear me say that because I talk about business and money so much. But yeah. th let's take this idea to uh, to a marriage as an example. I uh, I was blessed enough to to marry my uh, niece and uh, and her husband last weekend. And so I said, hey, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right, and we do some you know, kind of pre-counseling and, and we're going to do some work around this. Um, and we did some work and they're on their honeymoon. I told them when they get back, we have three more meetings and we're, we're, we're going to go on this. And one of the things that we talked about was um, at, with that young couple um, and they're 25 and 29 and, you know, just newly married, they've been together nine years, but newly married and one of the things that we talked about is, hey, you're going to have all kinds of challenges, all kinds, things you can't even imagine right now, but all kinds of challenges. We either feel like we can get through them and go to this next level of appreciation and love, or, hey, uh, it's got to be your fault that we're not making enough money, or it's got to be your fault that we couldn't get pregnant, or it's got to be your fault for something else. We start the blame game, which is on the fixed side of the equation. Um, I said earlier, anytime you hear someone blame the government, another person, a condition, that's on the fixed side, right? That, that's how you can tell. That's the trigger, right? And if you, if you listen to people, you will hear this all the time. And I've, I've been studying this stuff for a number of years, at least 15 years, this fixed versus growth mindset, maybe 20. It, because it's, it's, it's amazing to me on what it takes to achieve and what are those differences are. Let me give an example, uh, and I don't know if this will work. I'm going to say five questions one way, and then I'm going to say five questions a different way, mm -hmm. and see if you can tell which is which group of questions are fixed and which are um, um, which are growth minded. These are just questions. So how this pertains to your life is, you know, uh, sometimes you got uh, people around you that are fixed minded, and you're you're trying to be growth minded. But just being around those fixed-minded people 
allow you to uh, more think more fixed minded than growth minded and it gets very confusing so here's a set of questions there's only five um what is the challenge that you avoided instead of what is the last challenge you overcame yeah same question said totally differently another question uh when is the last time you reached an obstacle but you just gave up versus what obstacle did you last conquer you can feel it i'll do one more um when did you just give up because you thought it was pointless versus what is something you almost gave up but you didn't now how we talk to our children one can sound fixed minded one can sound growth minded um you know this uh one, one of the things that that's in um carol's book is, is she talks about this idea of over complimenting people instead of being honest and you what you're doing is encouraging them to be more fixed minded uh i have some friends of mine that's like oh yeah this stuff in sports now where everyone gets a particip participation trophy is is pointless i had one dad tell me yeah my dad my uh son came home with a couple of those the last time he came home with them i said son come out here and they went out to the to to behind the garage and he said he threw it down on the ground and crushed it and he says there's no participation trophies going in this house because participation is one that you're supposed to participate you're on the team right and That's i just funny. chuckled i just laughed so hard but that that will even though it sounds harsh to some people that hear that right now, the message is clear. Yeah. Now, if you got first place, second place, third place, or overall champion, or most improved, or what, right? Okay, we overcame. You're rewarding people for facing a challenge and getting better. And yeah. that's the mindset of successful people, people that have more happiness. When I say success level, again, I'm not talking about monetary success level as much as I am a feeling that you're growing, a feeling that you're learning, a feeling that we're making a contribution bigger than ourselves onto society. You know, Vasily, when I hear you, your story, um, it, I, 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 I get inspiration from it. You know, I tell you, my, um, my oldest brother is getting ready to get married. And, um, you know, this uh, uh, a, a growth minded person, when they see people have success, you know, they're happy for them. That's another indicator, right? So my brother comes over with his soon to be wife who they are getting married in September. And I just love Sherry Ann, his, his girlfriend. They make such a great couple and I admire their relationship. Like I truly admire it. I'm not jealous, even though I wish I had something like that. I just admire it. I'm happy for them. And that's another example. Sometimes when I when I when I see the uh, the classic girls being mean to each other, like in grade school and stuff, but it, they do it as adults too. I just had a friend of mine come back from her bachelorette party, and told me, "Yeah, some of the girls didn't get along. Well, they didn't get. How could you? How could you be so selfish? You're on someone else's bachelorette party, and you cause a scene and fight with three other girls. That's just selfish." Right. Yeah, that's just saying, I need some attention. Look at me. Right. That obviously that's what that is. And so we got to get past this stuff. We, we you know, if I'm it, it, at something like that, it's about the other person. It's about having fun. It's about making sure that that person has the best time ever. And that's the idea. But again, that's the different mindset of fixed minded versus growth minded. So yeah, I, I also wanted to say that uh, with my kids, I, I think that's this that we are, we have to grow out of the fixed minded mindset. I think we're built in with a fixed, uh, fixed uh, mindset because like on my kids that I asked them like, Hey, this needs to be done. And she's like, Oh, well, I, I didn't do it. Or it's not my responsibility. I'm like, I didn't ask whose responsibility or who did it. You need to do it. You need to get over yourself, learn this and to get it done. And it's just uh, interesting to see that they, they're kind of fixed minded right now, but we as parents have to teach them to, to grow and to change. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, 
I also think that, that so when, when we talk, yes, you, when, so let's dig a little bit deeper in here. You talk about parenting for sure. I mean, think about it. We're, we're making our kids in the beginning of their life, we're changing their diapers. We're getting them dressed. We're giving them a bath. We, you know, food just shows up. It just shows up, right? Vasily writes, food just magically appears to the kids. So there's, we have to teach them that. And the, the best tip I ever got from a, from a person that specializes, he's a psychologist specializing in raising children, gave this great talk. And he said, one of the best things you can do for your children is to make them achieve everything. So uh, a couple months ago, my daughter wanted a new doll. I mean, it was maybe $20 on Amazon. And I said, okay, well, where's your money? Because she gets allowance. She says, I don't, I spend it all. I said, okay, well, we can't take your money out of savings. Uh, and so what, how important is this to you? What are you willing to do for it? And she thinks about it for a minute and she's all, dad, I will wash and wax both your cars and I will clean out my, my entire room. All those old toys you've been wanting me to get rid of, I'll get rid of every single one old toy. I said, okay, great. And we shook on it and then she did it <laughs> and I ordered it, right? So it's it can be small things. There's not big things. You know, someone wants to go to the movies. Hey, maybe we there's some small achievement. Hey, why don't you finish all the dishes from tonight and then we'll go to the movies. It's just a, it puts that mindset that there's a gonna be an obstacle in order to achieve anything you want because nothing's for free. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my wife is making fun of me because uh, sometimes uh, like the kids want to get something from Walmart or some other store. I'm like, okay, grab your wallet or grab your, so they, they bring in this, this huge thing with coins and they walk around the store and then they have to pay for it. Yes, I and love then, it. And then they start counting because this toy is now $10.77 and this one is 19. So they're choosing if it's worth it because their their money is depleting fast so so there's start this this mindset of okay i got to plan ahead and uh, it's super interesting i just step back and enjoy them arguing that this is too expensive now and they have to get a cheaper one 100% i think that is awesome good for you that's what we should do um let's talk about a few other areas of life where this applies we we talked about weight um you know that just a, a one more comment on that one um you know, there's that E90X that came out several years ago. And they have, if you go on their website, they, they literally have hundreds of before and after shots and videos of people. And I, I had some friends come to me and say, do you think this is really true? I said, well, uh, yeah, because I got P90X and I did it for a while. And it teaches you to eat chicken breast and broccoli literally seven days a week. And you work out six days a week, twice a day. I said, so yeah, it works. If you do that, you will get a six pack. Like it works. So, uh, you know, I think that's a that's a good analogy for that one. But let's talk about a couple other more. Um, well, let me let me let me let me do work, friends, and then spouse, and dig on those three subjects, and then we'll wrap up. So, Vasily, we were talking just a couple minutes before he this poor Vasily gets on this podcast. He's like, I don't even know what we're talking about. Um, I said, just answer some questions. So. Um, you told me a story when we were talking before uh, about um, the, 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 the old company you work for in their mindset and then what's different here uh, when we're working together. So explain that difference because I think that how I want people to hear that story is you, you know, we spend over 60% of our waking hours at work and it does influence how happy you are in a big way. So just explain that difference because that would help people yeah. Yeah. So uh, when I started working at the credit union, uh, I enjoyed my job. It was, it was a good time. You, you work with people, you see, you know, with customers, with coworkers as always. Um, but the, the thing is that I noticed once I moved out of that, uh, I noticed that it was very fixed minded position and fixed minded uh, income, basically, let's say, because you, for example, you work at a job, nine to five job, and uh, you have to serve customers and do loans. So for me, it was it was a, a hassle. Like 
I was thinking like, why should I do this loan for this person? Because even though I'm not like, uh, I wasn't like sending people away, but I had that thought is like, I'm already doing enough work, for example, three loans a month or something. Why should I do three more if there's no reward? Like you do more and get, and you get less actually, because if you screw something up, <laughs> they come after you. <laughs> And sometimes you have an idea and you present it and then you get uh, frowned upon because like, okay, that didn't work or something like that, you know, because there's no reward for the job. So, and when I, when I went into the, you know, commission-based uh, businesses, like, okay, you do one loan, you make this amount, you do two loans, you double your income. You make four loans, you double your income again. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. I should make four loans then, or five, or six. <laughs> do, do, so, do you remember what I told you? I started telling you this shortly after you started, and I don't know if you remember these comments, but um, I met Vasily, and I, I've always had a, a, an odd sixth sense about talent. And I just, I got to know him a little bit, and I was like, Vasily, you're going to be a superstar. Like you literally are going to be so great in this world, so great at this company. You remember some of those comments? Yeah, yeah. When we met first in your office. Yeah, I'm trying to plant seeds. I'm trying to, hey, we're going to be growth mind, you know. And you were already of that mindset, or else you wouldn't have made the decision to come in the first place. But I wanted sometimes, like I, I tell my leaders this. I'm like, look at self having people talk about self-confidence but a lot of self-confidence comes from what other people tell you some of it does like there are there were several people tell me hey todd you're really good at sales so i thought i was good at sales there's people that told me hey you're really good at running a company so i thought i was good you know it's like they're telling me and giving me confidence above and beyond what i produce myself that's interesting because uh I had a real estate license since 2008, I think. And uh, I did a couple, you know, had, it was my second job, basically. So I did it for family and friends. Uh, and then I, I met this uh, loan officer and, and she's like, she saw how I was, you know, getting documents, helping her out, making sure that the clients bring everything in. She's like, you would make a great loan officer. <laughs> and this was like in 2000, like, four years before I started even, you know, doing it at the credit union. Uh, so that, that's interesting that, you know, she planted the seed and now I'm thinking back and like, she was right, you know? Yeah. So, so let's segue into friends because uh, this is, this gets even more personal. Um, I, 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 I truly don't believe that if someone is hanging around friends or acquaintances, that are that are negative or fixed-minded that you're if those are most of your friends you're not all of a sudden gonna follow your growth mindedness that's a that's i don't know if that's a theory but it's just things that i've watched people with I remember i had a friend this is four or five years ago it was i really liked him from guy from my golf club and uh, i was really growing a friendship with him and then i i realized that everything bad in his life as we as we went deep um, was someone else's fault and he was fixed. He had a bad marriage because of his, his wife was just horrible. Well, I ended up meeting his wife like four times and I was like, man, I, she's great, right? And it started dawn on me. Like uh, he w wasn't making enough money because of this outside issue. And, and finally, I just was like, whoa, I, it, it's hard to explain unless you have real consciousness of this like I do. But I was like, oh, that person's over here. And I noticed the more I, when I hung around him, uh, he was very fun and gregarious, but the real him was actually very negative and a, a lot of uh, narcissism and stuff like that. And I was just like, I got to separate. And I, I remember telling him, I said, bud, uh, I don't mind if, if we see each other once in a while, like I don't dislike you but I'm not going to hang, I'm not going to like go deeper on our friendship. That's a hard conversation. Um, but I believe who you hang around has everything to do with this subject because it either supports it and grows you and encourages you 
or it tells you you're no good, you know, come with me into my fixed minded camp and just camp out with me and we'll just be together in our misery. So what are your thoughts about who you hang around? I'm talking about friends, family, acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. Well, gen generally, I think uh, it depends on, on, on you as a leader, since you're, you have this leader, you know, mindset that you, you can understand this and stop hanging around with people. Either they change or you stop, uh, stop hanging around with them. Uh, for me personally, uh, since I got married, my my friend is my wife. <laughs> I don't have much time, I'm, and my four kids. <laughs> so, after work and my wife and family, uh, frankly, I don't have much time for friends. Uh, you know, I I do have acquaintances. We meet with people. We we have a lot of people over, church friends at church. So we we do a lot of we communicate a lot. But I I don't have that sincere like growth and friendship as as that I could you know that I could, uh, you know, share with you. But uh, I think you're correct. If, if the person is negative, he, he you know, uh, he will not bring positive positivity in your life. That's for sure. Yeah, it becomes a taking relationship instead of a mutually beneficial relationship. And the same thing happens with spouses. And this is a, I remember, um, uh, I, I, I call him my love coach. I have this 77 year old man who helps me understand uh, romantic relationships and I just love them. And we talk once a month. And uh, when I first met him, he says, Todd, it really boils down to four categories. When, when it comes to romantic love, it's, it's physical attraction, emotional connection, um, intellectual connection, and spiritual connection. And when we got to the spiritual piece, what he talks about is common beliefs and values. Um, this, this you know, one part of, of this is this growth mindedness versus fixed mindedness. And I've seen this happen in couples where one person is just a go getter and they're taking over the world and all this stuff. And, and, it, and it tends to happen like later, you know, as the marriage progresses over years and years and, and you run into this one person's this super growth minded individual. But, but the other spouse is not, and they, they actually become jealous or, you know, kind of weird things happen. I think that's a thing in marriages that I've seen happen. Now, of course, when it works great, you know, they both kind of progress at the same rate somewhat. Um, um, I'm not saying that this is, uh, it's one of, you know, maybe a hundred factors in a marriage, but it is one of those things that if you're, if you're that person that is driven, motivated, uh, super growth oriented, I would encourage someone to find someone else like that, because that's going to fill up your cup, where the, whether is, uh, if someone is not, that's going to be, it's for sure going to be some sort of problem in that close of a relationship. I'm just curious what your views are on that. Yeah, I think, I think uh, in marriage, I think it's okay when people are different. I think it's actually better because if I'm super hectic and uh, messy, uh, my wife better be clean and because <laughs> because it's gonna be pretty bad, you know, at our house if it's if it, if we're the same, you know. So I'm glad my wife is very different from me. Uh, but regarding growth, mine of course, uh, and I think that's part of uh, uh, being a husband that uh, I need to uh, lead my wife, make sure she grows as well. Or if it's the other way around, same thing. If she's growth minded, make sure that her husband grows as well. So it's, it's just, uh, I think it's something we need to grow on. The same thing, uh, I think we're, we're fixed minded at first and we have to start being growth minded and more open. And uh, same thing in marriage, I think. And the, the problem is later in life, I, I'm, we've been married for 13 years. And uh, it's been great, the best time of my life. Uh, so uh, I, I can't tell if it's 30 or 40 years in marriage, you know, but I know that uh, later in life, I hope we get, you know, even closer together yeah. and either keep growing or keep, you know, in the same category for sure. Well, my bet is it will. Um, 
you know, as we as we kind of wrap this up, uh, I, one of the things that I think is beautiful about today's the world we live in is there's no lack of good information. There's no lack of good books. Uh, almost any smart person has a podcast or they wrote some book or uh, there's so many wise teachings out there. And I think this is one of them that this is one of those books that for me was a before and after moment. I thought it was a good subject for a podcast. I have really found, uh, I, I, you, Vasily just said something that I think is important, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your children, people at work, I would encourage you to be a leader in this category. Um, you know, share this, this, if this podcast hit home or you want someone like, hey, this person is really into this, or maybe they're Maybe they're fixed-minded on a subject and you want to send them this, text them this podcast and say, hey, take, take a listen. I know I was, uh, I have a friend of mine going through a hard time right now. And, uh, you know, that um, he's being challenged in a big way. And uh, I listened to that podcast this morning about the gentleman running 100 marathons in 100 days. And uh, I texted it to him and, and, and I said, bud, I'm praying for you. And you're, you're being t- tested very hard right now and this guy was also tested and we'll we can get through it and that's kind of that growth-minded mindset like I want to be even though he doesn't feel that way because I just talked to him the day before I want to encourage him that there's always good things that come out of dark times and we will always go through peaks and valleys in our life um, where things aren't as great you know that we, we don't live in a world of perfection and so to me knowing some of these basic principles allows me to get through those crazy, crazy times. And I think sometimes people uh, have told me, Todd, it seems like you never have crazy times. I'm like, oh yeah, I have some crazy stuff happen in my life. Um, but I, what, 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 what allows me to understand and hold together is, is I think of things like this and I think, hey, overcome obstacles. And then I'll think for a second, a little pity party. Well, there's been a lot of obstacles lately. And then I'm just like, well, I'll get through it, right? I, I can ask for help. I got a bunch of smart people around me. I got a bunch of you know, people that will help me. And let's just, let's go through it. And that's my overall feeling about when I understand principles like this and I see them play out in my life. I see them play out in Vasily's life. I see them play out in lots of people's lives. This stuff it works and it's right. It's it's a, it gives you a framework for understanding how to over, overcome those things. So Vasily, some closing comments from you on this subject. Yeah, this is really interesting. I, I'm hoping you uh, gift me a book with your initials <laughs> 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 so I can read it as well. It's super interesting. And yeah, it's, uh, I think uh, we, we need to be in this growth minded subject, not be afraid of growing and uh, not be afraid of risk. Yes. Be smart at it, but not be afraid of risk. And then we'll be happy. Our, our marriage will be uh, great. You know, our finances will be in place. So I think no, nothing, I, I tell my kids, nothing good comes from doing nothing. So to achieve something good, you always have to put in effort for your room to be clean and nice. You have to bend over 150 times and pick up things, you know. You have a way of keeping things so simple and eloquent. Um, I think I think one of the most profound things that um, that you said that I learned from you today is you said, "Look at, you know, I probably am not naturally this huge risk taker, but I wanted to change the type of job I did, and I saved for it, and I pre-planned for it, and I had a backup plan, and and then I took the risk." And, and I think that's, I, w- I wanted people, I wanted to hit on that one more time because I think it's one of those things where so many people are, I see them so afraid to take any kind of risk. And it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not saying do it arbitrarily but without good, good counsel, without talking to someone, without pre-planning it, but there's so many great risks that we can take in life. And it's, it's getting out on those little skinny branches instead of just hugging the tree. And that's, that's a, something I think of all the time, that we can take logical, well-thought-out risks. Is it nerve-wracking? Yes. Will it drive you a little crazy for a while? Yes. But 
I can't think of one that I've taken, and I think Vasily would say the same, that I haven't at least learned from, and probably 80, 90% of the times it's turned out great. So that's, that's the part of the mindset with this is live life free, be aggressive around life, get out on the skinny branches, diminish fear, um, ask for help. Those are all really good, like solid elements to live in a great life. And that's what this is all about is we're only here once. There's one little merry-go-round. It's not that long and we should be making the most of it and not being afraid of it. So Vasily, I, you're very gracious with your time. I love your story. You, I love just knowing you as a person. It's, it, it, it's oddly inspirational when you see someone like you. It, to you, it's your life. But I will tell you, people will listen to this and they'll be like, well, if this guy can come from a second or third world country, learn a language, put himself through college, learn to have this stupendous career, yeah, I could probably go to yoga class that I've been meaning to go to because I've been afraid to, I've never done yoga before and I'm nervous. I could probably take guitar lessons. You know, I could probably plan becoming a manager uh, in my company or taking that next step forward because it's inspiring when you see other people do it. It's part of what we're supposed to be doing. So I wanna thank you for that. And thanks for being on today. We're gonna to have a great time uh, listening to this. Show it to your kids. It'll be a little extra teaching. Thank you, Todd. Thank you for having me. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Remember, you can, you can always uh, find some of this stuff on, on the website, uh, beyourbestseries.com. Remember, we I do this because I wanna give back to people, but we do do home loans for a living. So if you know someone sent you this, and it's probably from my company, uh, someone wants to buy a house, someone wants to refinance a house, you know of a realtor that they should know, a home builder, refer us guys. So that's how we get our business. We're not on the, we're not out there advertising a lot. A lot of it's just doing a really good job for our clients and then asking for your help. So that's how you can say thank you. And as always, I appreciate you guys listening and forward this to friends and family. It's, a, it's a very honoring to me. So thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day. I just want to invest in people that really want to be the best that they can be.